Well, hello again to all the boys and girls out there in YouTube land watching. Georgia Beer Reviews back at you today with another one. What I'm looking at is another beer from this variety pack that I bought from Long Trail Brewing Company out of Windsor, Vermont. Also now with locations in Boston, Massachusetts and, uh, what was it, Bridgewater Corners, Vermont. So two locations in Ver Vermont, one in Massachusetts. Uh, this is the Northwest IPA. It says West Coast style, East Coast brewed, clocking in at 5.5% ABV, a piney resinous cross country trip with enough malt to make the hop stick. All right, this was canned on April 10th, 2024, so about three months old at the time of this recording, so not super fresh, but kind of at the end of its lifespan. The two beers that I've already had out of the variety pack have been very good, so I do have high hopes for this. They weren't musty or old or didn't seem faded in, in any way. So uh, looking forward to this one. There's your pour. Definitely looks more like a, a West Coast style IPA. Kind of a clear golden, deep golden color. It actually looks lighter on camera right now than it does to the naked eye. Um, about a finger's worth of a nice, a nice frothy head. Smelling some West Coast hops in there, a little bit of a piney, resinous um, type of aroma. Definitely some nice malt action as well, though. A nice West Coast IPA has to be balanced. You have to get the hops, the bite, that piney, resinous, kind of grapefruit, citrus type of feel. But you also have to have a good malt backbone. Otherwise, it's just a palate wrecker, and it's really not that enjoyable, at least for me. And this one smells just like that. It smells like it has a nice balance between the malts and the hops. I don't really smell any alcohol at all. Typically, with these types of beers, the hops and everything would mask the alcohol anyway. That would come into play more on the palate if there was to be an alcohol presence. But at 5.5% alcohol, I don't see that being an issue anyway. It smells like a winner, though. So without further ado, let's get to this brew. Sorry if there's background noise. Got the AC running. 95 degrees here in Massachusetts today. That's actually really nice. Definitely getting the West Coast vibes. Getting that piney, resinous um, type thing right up front. Leads into a nice malty, bready center. Then a little bit of like a grassy and citrus, like grapefruit citrus type hot bite on the back end. Well rounded though, all the way through. Not one thing too strong. It's really an enjoyable beer, um, and it's on the lighter side, so it's definitely not a palate wrecker. This is something I can enjoy, and this is something that I would buy again. I would definitely pick up a six-pack of this if I could find it, you know, just a six-pack of the Northwest IPA. I think it's a really enjoyable um, Northwest type of IPA brewed right here in New England, um, but definitely a really enjoyable beer. It's light-bodied, it's crisp, it's clean, it's refreshing. The finish is mostly dry. On a hot day like today, it doesn't get much better than this. Yeah, this is really good. I actually like this better than the Vermont IPA, which is considered a um, New England IPA, which, I mean, it's good, but it's, it's, it's not on the same level as the New England IPAs that I might be used to with Spyglass and Treehouse and Modest Man and Burlington Beer Company and um, even Kettlehead, beers like that. But this is a really, really enjoyable beer. Um, and I was talking about this beer, the Vermont IPA, not the one that I'm drinking now, which is the Northwest IPA, which I definitely think has its own place. Um, it's really up there with a lot of the standard West Coast type IPAs. There's a lot of the uh, Lagunita stuff, which is much higher ABV that I like better than this, the Imperial West Coast IPAs. But there are also so many that I really don't care for that are just too bitter, too piney, too resinous, too much, you know, of a palate record type of situation. It's one and done. This I could see myself drinking quite a few of. Um, really enjoyable product. I'm going to go with a 94 out of 100. I think this is a pretty solid A beer. And I've shown this on the other beer reviews that I did out of the variety pack. Uh, so I'll show it to you guys here as well in case you don't watch those. 
This was the Long Trail Brewing Company IPA pack. They had the Little Anom Anomaly IPA, which is a light IPA at 3.8%. The Vermont IPA, which I've reviewed already. The Northwest IPA, which I'm reviewing now. And then the Limbo IPA, which I've already reviewed as well. That is the highest ABV beer out of the four pack at 7.6%. This 12 pack cost me about $17 and change. And I think it's definitely worth it. I have one more beer, the lightest of the beers out of the four pack, out of the 12 pack to try, the Little Anomaly, Anomaly at 3.8%. Not really looking forward to that one. I'm sure it's probably a fine beer, but 3.8% is going to be super light and watery, I'm sure. Um, so I saved the worst for last, I guess. Although you never know. You got to try it and review it before you judge it. It might be the best out of the whole pack. Who the heck knows? But anyway, the. Northwest IPA from Long Trail Brewing Company. It is definitely a winner. Like I said, I'm going to go with a 94 out of 100. I highly, highly recommend it if you can find it in a six-pack, if you can buy a single, if you can find it in the variety pack. It's definitely worth a pickup, especially if you like a little bit more of the piney, resinous type of notes, uh, West Coast, more traditional style IPAs. But it also works for the New England IPA fans because it's not too heavy. It's well-balanced. There's plenty of malt backbone in the middle. Uh, some nice bready notes, a little bit of sweetness from the malt as well. So, really a nice beer. So, that'll do it for this beer review, folks. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Until next time, everybody. Cheers.